We have today as a guest Cynthia J. Ebinger. Dr. Ebinger, please introduce yourself to our audience. Hello, I am a professor of geophysics at Tulane University, and I have spent the past 35 years working in different parts of the East African Rift Valley. And of course, uh, your research interests, earthquake seismology, active tectonics, potential fields, crustal dynamics, critical zone imaging for archeology span and geosciences, fitting credentials for the subject we're about to talk about. So, doctor, VOA so far has reported the evacuation of approximately 80,000 residents from Ethiopia's Afar, Oromuya, and Amhara zones. In the last week alone, at least 10 earthquake, earthquakes have been recorded in Ethiopia, the strongest measuring 5.8 on the Richter scale, affecting areas including Addis Ababa. This strong magnitude on the Richter scale, what are we supposed to make out of it? The size of the earthquakes is part of the question and answer that we have as scientists. So we look at an earthquake, say in isolation, but also in this case, what we call swarms, lots of earthquakes in roughly the same spot, continuing over a prolonged period, that is more typical of areas that have fluid. And fluids in the earth can be water, they can be molten rock. And we're near active volcanoes like Fantale and Dofan, so the impression is that, initially our impression was that there was some molten rock involved and we paid close attention to the volcanoes. So this Ethiopia's Rift Valley, one of the most seismically active regions in the world. Talk to us about that. Introduce us to this Rift Valley. What is it? Uh, the Rift Valley of East Africa is world, the world's uh, textbook example of how continents slowly break apart to produce new ocean basins, mm -hmm. drift apart just now, like West Africa and North America were connected 180 million years ago. They separated and now we have an ocean between us. Well, the same is true of Arabia that split off about 30 million years ago. And that process is happening in East Africa. But, you know, most of the time the motion is as slow as my fingernails or my hair grows. But there are extreme events that might take up 400 years worth of plate opening in a day or two. And those intense events are uh -huh. in effect what we're witnessing now. They're rare, but they happen, and they have happened in the past in this same area. And the Dauphin volcano, for instance, in this northern Ethiopia along the path of the Rift Valley, has shown signs of potential eruption with smoke observed. The region is known to be a volcanic tectonic zone. Uh, elaborate on that. Okay. Yes. Volcanoes on their own are a hazard, and the volcano is evidence that there has to be um, a storage zone for molten rock beneath that. They might last, a volcano might last for a million years, be active off and on, um, but when a volcano is at a plate boundary, there's something else. So we have fault systems that are helping the plates, in this case, break apart, and those faults can interact with the volcano, and that makes them tectonic and volcanic at the same time, or volcano tectonic. And it also increases the hazards in the area. So we can have, instead of just the volcano, we have the earthquakes as well. Seismologists are saying there has been no uh, eruption yet, but there is a spread of uh, magma under the Earth's crust in the region, between zero and 15 kilometers. It's spreading a large fissure about uh, 50 kilometers long. 
Does this indicate something bigger may be in the works? It may, because we don't, we, we don't understand Earth processes well enough to perfectly predict. On the other hand, it may mean that things are getting better. And here, let me explain. If you think of uh, a, a balloon or something with a high pressure inside, if there's a way to let some of that pressure leak out, the balloon shrinks and the, the, the problem could go away. The same can happen in a magma chamber where it swells, it expands, it starts to crack the rocks around it. If some of that pressure is relieved by a sheet of magma, uh, that may reduce the risk of an eruption at the surface. And I think that we as scientists don't do such a great job of explaining that the volcano at the surface is one part of the system, but there's three to five times as much material underground. Mm -hmm. So a lot's happening underground that we don't see, and this is an example of the process that happens on a fairly regular basis but is hidden to us. You're very familiar with uh, Ethiopia, uh, uh, with Addis Ababa, with millions residing in Addis Ababa uh, in vulnerable buildings with outdated codes. Uh, Ethiopia's capital, is it in the crosshair? The capital is going to experience ground shaking from distant earthquakes, without a doubt. Um, and so sh ground shaking in Addis and the surrounding areas is, is an important part uh, of the um, responsibilities of the scientists at the Geophysical Observatory at the university and the engineers that they interact with um, in trying to work to improve the codes for that shaking. But the amount of shaking decreases pretty rapidly away from where the earthquake is, so it's not really in the crosshairs. The crosshairs is a fairly narrow zone that is roughly where the Awash River is mm -hmm. and is very near to the main road up and through to um, Djibouti. And that is, a good, is the primary indicator of the, of the crosshairs for right now. And also uh, the UN Office for Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, uh, the authorities say that uh, authorities have evacuated about 60,000 people living in high-risk areas, high-risk areas, including some near a dam. Uh, should we be worried about dams actually uh, uh, erupting? Uh, the failure of a dam or a leakage of a dam is definitely a concern. There are multiple dams in Ethiopia that are near active fault lines. Uh -huh. In general, those dams are, are maybe not filled as high as they originally were planned as, as information became more available. Uh, and I know in the past that there have been some problems building dams in the rift. Um, there was a failed dam on the Kassim when uh, there was an underground reservoir that was captured and caused, to fa caused failure of a dam before it was completed. So evacuating people from the downstream areas from the dams is a very important measure as because the shaking of these earthen dams can lead to cracks and may potentially a, a failure that could um, cause big harm. So as a scientist, how can you kind of calm down the people of Ethiopia? in terms of these uh, unusual uh, earthquakes recently? Well, well, one of the things that I'd like to say is that these have happened in the past, or these types of episodes have happened in the past, they'll happen in the future. In 2005, there was an extreme event that was, was bigger than this that impacted the area about a 70 kilometer zone north of Tendaho in the Afar area. 
there are many people that needed to be evacuated, but they there there were people that had to move to camps because their groundwater supply or their water supplies dried up and changed during these these episodes. But um, what I'd say too is that the smoke that was visible is in an example of what happens when hot material in the subsurface hits groundwater. There's water in the subsurface and the heat causes vaporization of the water. And uh, I think a good way to explain it is that I could take a cube of water like this and it would expand to about the size of a bus yeah. as it heats mm -hmm. and expands and that ex kind of explosive force. So it's water, not magma that we've seen so far. So the hot magma interacting with the groundwater is a concern, and I think we've seen examples of that so far at Dauphin. Um, but we're watching with these increasing earthquakes, maybe there's more magma shifting. And w we say watching, scientists have um, used satellite data, repeat measurements of satellites to look at sub-centimeter, you know, millimeter scale changes in our surface. And the patterns of these shape changes helps us understand what's moving underground, where it's moving, and even um, how shallow, how close to the surface it's getting. And that's what we're tracking. There are groups of scientists in Europe and the US, the US Geological Survey is assisting the observatory in Addis Ababa. This observatory in Addis Ababa, uh, is it a kind of early warning system? Yes, there's a network of seismometers in the country that telemeters information to the observatory. They provide near real time information on the locations of those earthquakes. They look for patterns in the earthquakes, their differences in the kinds of shaking that happen that help us understand, oh, is it, is it magma or is there molten rock involved or is it a, an uh, just a rock, rock, uh, uh, an earthquake, a typical earthquake. Um, and unfortunately, there, there's not enough staff to have a, um, a PR group or public relations group to communicate regularly during these crises in country. So I feel privileged to be assisting the observatory and the Institute for Geophysics at, at the Addis Ababa University in trying to communicate allay concerns and try and explain uh, scientifically what's happening. Anything else you'd like to add as far as, I mean, you are helping out actually with the uh, observatory. Uh, with any advice to the government? Um, what I'd say is that this, this area, this remote area, highlights the need for instrumentation. One of the concerns, the biggest concerns at the observatory is that they don't have enough instruments in the area to, to pre precisely determine the depth. Uh -huh. And depth becomes important if hot material is rising upward. We want to track it over time. And without more instruments in this very active area, they can only do a kind of imprecise job. It's like surgeons trying to operate with, with mittens on their hands. They need better instrumentation to be able to move forward. Well, Dr. Cynthia J. Ebinger, thank you for your input.